arguably one of the most common areas we see problems with a modified car when it's taken out onto the racetrack is with the performance of the braking package. It's really common, particularly with a factory brake package, to find that it just can't handle the heat that's generated out on the racetrack with sustained heavy braking into multiple corners. So this is where a lot of enthusiasts will look at upgrading their brake package. Now we're here with Phil from Alcon to find out a little bit more about what goes into your considerations when it comes to these brake upgrades. So Phil, for a start, let's just talk about where the limitations lie in a production brake system. Obviously a production car is designed predominantly for use out on the road and obviously on the track we're generating a lot more heat. So where are the problems we sort of see with that brake package when the heat generated starts to become excessive? Well, the, as you say, the problems are really in the heat capacity of the system. There's not, there's not enough mass in, in a, a stock rotor to handle multiple high energy braking events. And then also the friction material itself is designed to be quiet and to work well at low temperatures and just around town and generally they don't hold up to the type of abuse you'd put on a racetrack. So basically the, the, the disc, the rotor, cannot get rid of the heat fast enough. It's getting heat put into it faster than it can reject that heat. Plus yep. you've got the friction material that's not designed for a road car to work at those elevated temperatures in a nutshell? Exactly, yes. And the calipers too are not designed for the high temperatures either. Alright, so there's multiple areas that we need to focus on here, so let's just yeah. work through the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first of course is a, a, a larger rotor, so can you talk us through the benefits of moving to a larger rotor, both in terms of diameter and thickness? Yeah, so if you, if you increase the size of the rotor, then you're automatically getting more brake torque, which is first of all most important. A bigger rotor will generally cool better, you'll have a, you know, a good racing rotor will be uh, designed to pump air through it so it gets rid of the heat quickly um, and then in terms of the thickness of the rotor again that can give you thermal mass additional thermal mass to keep everything under control uh, and also uh, help with the with the rejection of the heat now in this in this instance is it really a case of bigger is simply better and you want to go with the largest diameter rotor that you can physically fit within the rim size you're running it really is for a brake rotor, yeah, because it's basically free brake torque. The more, the bigger rotor you put in, the more brake torque you'll get. It's important to mention, aside from your Alcon products here, uh, it's, it's usual in most race applications that even with a large diameter rotor, you're still going to have to augment that with airflow or cooling ducts to the brake rotor to try and help with that heat rejection. Absolutely, yeah, that's, that's really key because the, the uh, brake rotor isn't going to cool particularly efficiently on its own, it's got to have some air delivered to it in the right place to actually get that airflow through the, through the whole system. Alright, so once we've dealt with the rotor, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the materials in a second, but the other aspect here is of course the brake caliper itself, and uh, a lot of production cars we see on the cheaper level, a, a slider style single piston caliper or yeah. dual piston calipers, then we've got four, six and, and eight piston calipers. Uh, is it again a case of more is better, bigger is better with the caliper, or is a little bit more to consider? Uh, it's, a, it's not quite that simple with a caliper. Uh, one of the important things is the stiffness of the caliper. A sliding caliper isn't particularly stiff and what you want to do is, is all of the effort your, the, your foot is putting into the brake pedal needs to go into clamping that rotor. So a stiff caliper is important. The other thing is the pad itself, the pad area. Um, a larger pad area is going to give you uh, more wear resistance and it's also going to you know, spread the energy over a larger area. So when you say spread the energy over the larger area there, you're sort of talking about uh, versus a small pad and a large pad, you're basically putting less heat into that larger pad area? Exactly. So we, we calculate the, the energy per unit area for a, for a brake system and it's uh, based on the weight of the vehicle, how fast it's going to go and the other, the other parameters of the vehicle itself. I'll just come back a bit as well, you said about the stiffness of the caliper and I just want to elaborate that on that because it might not have been 100% clear and this is sort of the same reason why uh, we also moved to a, a braided brake line taking out any flex there so yep. that the, the pedal feel to the driver is superior, they've got more, more feel of, of what's actually happening so they've got more control over the brakes, is that fair to say? Exactly, yeah. You don't want to hit the pedal and the first, you know, the pedal moved two, three inches because everything in the system is is flexing and spreading. You need you need that precise control to know when the brake's going to lock up 
and to know that you know every the efficiencies there every every pound of effort you're putting into the brake pedal is actually going into stopping the car now a lot of enthusiasts at the club level street level and even up to semi professional will actually be working with a modified street car yep. and upgrading that brake package obviously these days just about everything that's coming off the showroom floor has an abs system mm -hmm. and i just want to talk about the considerations here in terms of modifying the brake package but also keeping a balance so that that factory abs system is still going to be effective so right. is, is there an issue here can we just go and throw any brake system on a car with ABS and let the ABS electronics uh, pick up the pieces afterwards or is there a little bit more to it? There's, there's a lot more to it really. Uh, you know, an ABS system on a car is calibrated to the size of the brake system that, that's designed for it. So the piston area, the piston, the fluid capacity and even the, you know, the rotor sizes and, and pad materials. So first, most important thing is to, when you're changing the calipers, is to have uh, a piston area, a total piston area that's similar to the, the OE size and also the front to rear ratio has to be the same as well to keep the balance correct. That's, that's the fir most, first and foremost the most important thing if you're going to maintain the stock ABS. Now if you're going to uh, a slightly more race orientated system where you're fitting a pedal box with dual master cylinders mm -hmm. and a brake balance bar, uh, again here there's some considerations around the sizing of the master cylinders to suit your calipers or yes. can all of those pieces be picked up with the brake balance bias? No, the brake, the, the brake bias, uh, the balance bar is really a fine adjustment. Uh, first you need to get the the basic balance of the system correct with the caliper piston sizing and the rotor diameter sizing and that's a simple calculation that we can do. Then we'll select the master cylinder sizes which is sort of the more coarse adjustment for the balance uh, and then like I say the, the, the balance bar itself is the fine tuning when you're out on track just, just to get that front to rear just right. Okay, just coming back to the, the piston sizes and the caliper as well, we see a, a lot of calipers where, let's say we've got a four or a six piston caliper, uh, the individual pistons are all the same size and then we've got other calipers where uh, the piston sizes are sort of staggered or differential sizes. Can you talk to us about the, the reason that we see these staggered piston diameters? Yeah, absolutely. So racing pads and high performance pads have a natural tendency to taper wear for a number of reasons. There's mechanical reasons where the, the leading edge of the pad tend to, tends to kick in and, and wear more, characteristic of the material itself. Uh, and then there's also some pad migration where we actually see material moving from one end of the pad to the other. So all of that can add to a, a, you know, a very taper weared pad. So the piston, the staggered pistons help to counteract that. So typically you'll have a much larger piston on the trailing end of the caliper to, to Tow, tow the pad in basically at the, at the back end to keep everything flat and then you'll get a much longer life out of your pad, better pedal feel and just a better, better solution all round. That yeah, makes perfect sense. Another thing when we come back to the rotors, uh, we see that in a motorsport application most of the rotors will have some form of slot or groove in them but uh, not all slots or grooves are created equal and there's a lot of different styles we're seeing on the rotors. Uh, is there a performance advantage to, to the different styles and why would you choose one over the other? Yeah, well the basic function of the slot is to, is to help get rid of the gases that are generated out of the pad, the dust. It, it helps with the initial bite of the pad. Um, the different designs have evolved over, over many years. You've got the simple straight groove uh, which is, you know, works fine for most track applications. When we get into streetcar based stuff, the single straight grooves can cause some distortion in the rotor and you might encounter some vibration or noise, that kind of thing. So then we, that's where we move to a segmented groove, so a lot of smaller grooves around the rotor. So you have a more consistent, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're covering the pad in a more consistent fashion. Uh, when it comes to fitting the, a new brake system and going out on the track for the first time, uh, getting the pad and the rotor bedded correctly it can be really critical and I think a lot of people really overlook how important that is and basically if you get this wrong you can end up destroying a brand new set of rotors and pads very very quickly. Yeah. Can you talk us through what actually occurs during that bedding process and the correct way of doing it? So the bedding process does a few things. It, 
bring it, it brings the temperature of the rotor up gradually so that you don't heat shock it and cause a possible distortion or cracking. And the other thing it does is it helps to put down a transfer layer onto the rotor, which is essentially pad material being being embedded into the surface of the rotor, so you've got a good mating surface for the pad and rotor interface. So basically what you're saying there is you don't want to go out with your brand new rotors, get up to 120 mile an hour and brake for the first time as hard as you can. That's, that's sort of going to be the worst thing you could do? That's, uh, that's a recipe for disaster, yeah. That's probably the best way to crack a brake rotor. Now once you've actually done that initial bedding as well, it's, it's important to actually let the rotor and pad assembly cool down. So this can actually take quite a bit of time. You can end up wasting an entire track session just bedding pads. So uh, Alcon actually offer this as a, a service on a, on a rig. Can you talk us through we that? We do, yeah. So uh, Alcon and our sister company Pro System, we have brake dynos where we have developed the machine and the process to pre-bed rotors. Uh, off the track so we can deliver you a, a rotor and pad set that's that's totally bedded it's done in a control fashion so we're not relying on the driver to remember to do it or or not uh, and it saves a lot of time on track and and we've we're at the point where we have you know different processes for different types of pad because everything behaves a little bit differently so you're getting that that uh, optimum bedding and not wasting a whole bunch of track time and potentially beating up on some expensive new components. Exactly right, and, and, and or potentially damaging them and having to buy another set. All right, so while uh, a lot of us at the enthusiast and semi-professional level are going to be restricted budget-wise to a, a cast iron rotor, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in professional levels of motorsport where budgets really aren't an issue, right. it's common to see the use of a carbon-carbon rotor mm -hmm. and pad setup. Can you talk us through the, the benefits of that system? The main thing is weight. Uh, you know, a carbon-carbon rotor is probably 25% of the weight of an of a equivalent cast iron rotor. So unsprung weight, rotating weight, it's, it's huge. Um, the, the, the downside or the offset of that is the cost. They're very, very expensive. They can last a long time, but they're very sensitive to the temperature range they're running in. So uh, running a carbon rotor too hot, it'll wear out very quickly. Likewise, if you run it too cold. So there's a very, there's a very specific sweet spot and you know, there's just a lot of maintenance with a, with a carbon, carbon setup. In terms of uh, a lot of the high-end production cars, we see uh, carbon ceramic rotors. Yes. So another take on that. Can you talk us through what a carbon ceramic rotor is? So a carbon ceramic rotor was developed from carbon carbon and it basically has added elements that improve the wear for, of, of the disc which makes it much more suitable for the street, it, uh, it performs very well when it's cold and, and through the temperature range but it's still, they, carbon ceramics still have the issues where they run very hot, the wear rate accelerates very quickly. I mean, obviously not a major consideration for a race car with the, the performance from absolute cold, but definitely much more of a consideration for your, your road car. You'd like to know that first time you hit the brakes coming out of your, your garage that the car is going to stop. Exactly, yeah. It's been great to get some insight there into what goes into a, a motorsport brake package. And if people want to find out more about the Alcon product specifically, where can they go to? Go to our website alcon.co.uk or the Pro System website, prosystembrakes.com. Perfect, thanks a lot for your time there, Phil. You're welcome. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.